So without much ado, Professor Louis Lancaster. Thank you. Thank you. Ron. Yes, thank you very much. I'm very happy to be back. I remember this room. I've spoken in this room several times through the years. I, I think the first time was 1983 when I first came here to do the textbook for the Buddhist uh, classes for secondary. And uh, I congratulate you that for all these years you've maintained this group and uh, maintained it at such a high level of the materials that you have been working with and all the people that you've had come here. It's an impressive endeavor that you have, and I congratulate you and to your president for doing this and to Bhante, who's, who's had to go. Yes, I had made this very nice PowerPoint. And this morning I had it. And then I went off to a meeting at uh, the university. And I plugged back in when I came back to the hotel. And in the interim, my PowerPoint said, I'm going on a vacation. And where it went to, I haven't the slightest idea. It's, it's really strange. <laughs> it's just gone. So obviously, it was not my karma to have a PowerPoint tonight. So as he says, I'll just wing it. And the main thing is, I would like for us to have a conversation. I much prefer to answer questions than to just talk in any case. What I want to say to you is that, as I've said to a number of groups that I speak to, I'm trying to think about something which I call informed Buddhism. And that informed Buddhism means almost precisely what you try to do with your group here. That is, to become informed about what Buddhism is about and what it teaches, to turn around and also inform others of what you know about it. So I'm giving that the term informed Buddhism. I want to talk a little bit about what the future seems to hold and then raise some questions for you about what you as Buddhist or all of us have to think about. As a futurist, futurologist, somebody who studies the future, Neville has said, we can no longer take the future for granted. The future must be rescued. We are at a point in the history of the earth where the future is really in serious question in many ways. And we have to determine how can we deal with this future. We have this strange situation in the world. The population of the earth is increasing at a very rapid rate. In another 30 years, we expect to have at least 9 billion people as opposed to the 7.5 billion that occupy the Earth at this moment. When you get another 2.5 billion people beyond what we already have, then the question is, what will the world be for them and where will they be? The irony is that part of the world is depopulating and part is expanding enormously. For example, Japan. The statistics now say if we look at the projection, there will be 60 million fewer Japanese in 2050 than there are today. Japan is closing down in many ways. They are closing schools, they're closing their infrastructure because they don't need it. They have no children. Where the tsunami struck in northern Japan, one of the big problems that they face is that it is an area mainly occupied by old people. All the young people have gone to the cities. 80% of the Japanese now live in urban, large environments. 
so that the people who were left in those small villages, the aging people who were left there, are faced with this horrendous problem. But they really have very little in the way of young people to help them rebuild their villages. It's going to be an extremely hard time for them. But it's not just Japan that's losing population. It's Russia. By 2050, Russia, on the present basis, will have 23 million people total. One sixteenth of the Earth's surface will have a population the size of a large city. How can they control that much territory? How will they handle all the issues that are going to arise? We realize that they probably won't and can't. So the whole demographics of Eurasia will be changing simply because there is no Russia as we've known it in the past that's going to be present. It will have the population of Yemen. Think about that. When Russia has the same population as a very small country like that. So depopulation in Europe is also a major issue. By 2050, there will be perhaps as many as 80 million fewer Europeans than there are today. The birth rate in Europe is below replacement to that level. So what happens in a place where you depopulate that much? You have to bring in some kind of immigrant labor. And who, where are they going to find the immigrant labor? And of course, it's going to be Muslim. So that Europe will probably, in another 50 years, be dominantly Islamic. And it's hard to imagine that that will be the case from the past, but the demographics tell us this is what's going to happen. In the US, we would be the same. We are depopulating in terms of my generation and my children's generation. The only thing that keeps us from having the same problems of aging is illegal immigration. It's illegal immigration that keeps our population up. It's illegal immigration that provides us with young people who do the work. People claim, you know, proclaim broadly we must stop this legal immigration, but in one way it's extremely valuable to the country. Without it, we would be closing down, just like Japan, so that our legal immigrants are joined by immigrants from Asia, particularly Southeast Asia, and but that's where we are in terms of that type of depopulation. The population growth is primarily in Asia, Southeast Asia. You're right here in the midst of a lot of the growth and Sub-Sahara Africa. Those are the places where the people of the future will be being born. But 97% of the people who will be born into the world, who will make up that 9 billion people, will be born into the less developed nations. We are not bringing in billions of young people into a world that is affluent. We are bringing them into a world where they will occupy places of poverty, lack of resources. It will be very difficult for them. Right now, 30-some percent of the world belongs in lives in developed countries. But by 2050, they estimate only 15% of the world's population will live in the developed countries. The world is changing dramatically dramatically 